One of the key benefits of introducing young children to engineering is that it exposes them to a new way to solve problems. Whether they're designing bridges or windmills, children proceed through a similar series of steps. These steps are the backbone of all engineering, the engineering design process. At Engineering is Elementary, we've developed a simplified five-step version of this process that children can easily learn and understand. Encouraging children to use these steps reinforces 21st century skills like critical thinking, teamwork, and creativity. The best way to understand the engineering design process is to see it in action. In this video, we will watch children as they ask, imagine, plan, create, and improve solutions to engineering design challenges. In the process, they will learn valuable problem-solving and thinking skills that they can use in other areas of their lives. Before starting any project, all engineers, children included, must ask and answer questions about the design challenge. During the ask step, children should be encouraged to think about what they need to know in order to solve the problem they're presented with. Some questions might be about the science behind the problem. Others might be about the specific goals of the technology they're creating. And others might be about the materials that they're going to have to work with. In this clip, we see third graders in Fairfax, Vermont, practicing the ask step. Sandy Brown has introduced her students to a design challenge in which they need to use a mirror to reflect the light from a flashlight to different parts on the inside of a box. She challenges her students to think deeply about questions they need to answer in order to produce a successful lighting design. Now, you get to ask me questions. We're going to be in the ask stage right now. What do you want to know about this project? Lexi. What kinds of materials are we using? And how what we type it? of materials? Do you get different light sources to like, see what you're doing? So I'm going to stop for a minute and what I'm going to do is show you the first one. I'm going to show you what materials are be will be available to you. Asking students what they need to know, rather than telling them, provides an opportunity for students to think critically about what exactly the problem is and how they might start solving it. The ask step helps them to begin to identify as problem solvers. Let's take a look at another class, this time in fifth grade. The teacher, Deborah Kelly Thomas, is having students review what they know about magnets to prepare for a magnetic vehicle challenge. At this point, Kelly's students have spent several hours on the ask step. They've explored different types of magnets and how strong they are. They've looked at the materials that they'll have available during the design challenge, and they know how their vehicles will be tested for safety and efficiency. Remember, we're still in the ask phase, so I want you to stay on the front sheet. And in the packet, it's asking you to list two properties of magnets that we can use that will help us to design our maglev trans package transportation system. Okay, let me share with you what Corel put. Corel says, property one, the repelling of the poles. She said, this property is important because if you don't put the same poles together, the train would not levitate. Okay, so that's a property of magnets that's gonna help her in designing her um, maglev system. Although students continue to ask and answer questions throughout the unit, this first step provides all learners with the baseline information they need to know to move forward. In the second step of the engineering design process, imagine, students start to brainstorm solutions. In this step, the goal is for students to independently come up with ideas, and they're encouraged to think creatively and without judgment. Individual students may respond differently to this type of challenge. Some students may not be as used to imagining more than one way to solve a problem. For others, brainstorming multiple possibilities is a true strength. 
As a teacher, it's important to acknowledge both the struggles and the rewards of navigating the imagined step. In this next clip, first graders are imagining different ways they might move pollen from one plant to another by hand. Their teacher, Julie, explains what she expects of her young students as they go through the imagine step. If we started with ask, where are we today? Imagine. We need to go to imagine. We have four different boxes, and you know what I'm hoping for? I want you to imagine one way of building a hand pollinator and drawing it right here. Label your pieces, your parts, label it so you know what you planned there. Then think of different materials and a different way to make a hand pollinator for box number two. And yet a different one for three and another different one for four. The Imagine Step allows students to experience the innovative, creative thinking style that has led to many of the world's engineering breakthroughs. In this next clip, Corey Christensen prepares her third graders as they start to imagine solutions for an aerospace engineering challenge. They're to design a parachute to land on another planet. Before they brainstorm, Corey provides examples from history to impress upon her students the importance of thinking outside the box. How are some of the most important inventions created? By imagining. By imagining them and just crazy outrageous ideas that many people wow. said there's no way that could work. Do you think everybody thought a person could go to the moon? No. No? What do you think that the, a lot of people probably told them, Justin? You can't do it's impossible. It's impossible. You can't do that. And so if they just said, okay, yeah, you're right, I'm going to stop, then we wouldn't have airplanes. We wouldn't, be, we wouldn't have been able to go up to space. So there's a lot of different things that are there because people do imagine all these possibilities and are brave enough to take that step. The Imagine Step reinforces that there's more than one way to solve a problem. It prepares students for the next step, plan, where they'll focus more deeply on the one design they want to create. So when you get together, you're going to be combining all of your ideas together. And this is what engineers do, is they come up with all these individual imagined ideas, then they come together and they talk about why would it work, why wouldn't it work. As Corey explained, during the plan step, groups of students must choose one imagined idea that they'll further develop and test. Back in first grade, Julie introduces the plan step to her students as they choose designs for hand pollinators. Her comments focus on teamwork, encouraging compromise and collaboration. It's time to make a plan. Draw a diagram on this big box now. Out of all four of those, which one do you like the best? And add labels so we know what materials you're using and how they're connecting. Are you ready? Okay. Tell me what you have here. Do you guys agree on this plan? Do you like it together? Oh, great teamwork. So let's say number three, but we'll, we'll just bend number three. How about that? So, so it'll be half a mutt. It will look like your idea, but it, it will do the things that are in my idea. Draw mm -hmm. by I love how you are writing your supplies and drawing what you think it's going to look like. That is great thinking. I, I'm, I'm loving your cooperation there. After discussion, the group records their final plan. They know that they're about to actually create this technology, so they're motivated to label their drawings and write down the materials they're going to need. Only after students have asked and answered lots of questions, imagined several different ways to solve the problem, and come to a consensus about a plan should they move on to the create step. In this step, students will follow their plan, build, and test their technologies. Needless to say, create is usually the most exciting step for students. Children are very excited to see their designs in action. Sometimes they work as expected, and sometimes they don't. Let's watch a group of fourth graders as they test the model membranes they designed and created. When designing a container for a frog, they used various materials to try and reduce the flow of water to a slow drip. In the middle. In the middle. In the middle. 
<laughs> what do you think? Too fast. Too fast? Yeah. Oh no. Oh my god, look, it's already like yeah, that water's gonna be gone. By All right, well what can you do tomorrow to improve? Put a sponge in it. <laughs> The improve step is fundamental to the process of engineering. It's important to give your students time to improve their designs. When given the opportunity to improve, students can think critically about what parts of their design are working well. Just as importantly, they can carefully observe what doesn't work. When failure is presented as a learning opportunity and a critical part of engineering, students come to accept and expect it. In this next clip, we see Grace Schofield in the improve step of the engineering design process as she leads her fifth grade students through the design of a high quality Play-Doh. Notice how she stresses that the improve step is never complete. Indeed, it's just the beginning of another iteration of the engineering design process. I'm seeing lots of interesting things going on, all right? Jordan, tell us what's happening at your table. Oh, we added, um, like, what? You went ahead? Yeah. And added? Yeah. What step is that? Uh, the improvement. You're going to improve the improvement? Yeah. <laughs> Do you see how this is a process? Once you keep doing it, it goes going on and on and on and you're not done? Just like professional engineers on the job, your students may not move sequentially from one step of the engineering design process to the other. They may transition back and forth in order to solve the problem at hand. Don't do the design process, and you want to build something or or help with something. You don't know how you're going to make it, and you don't know if it's good enough because you're just gonna build it, and you don't know if you need something or if you need to improve something, and it might not be sturdy enough. So you need the design process. As they practice using the engineering design process children come to understand that each step in the process is unique and each represents a critical part of engineering.